Hi everybody, so uh, 2.6, uh, the limits at infinity and the horizontal asymptote. So you know that the horizontal asymptote through the, over the X axis, if there is one, then uh, you know we're talking as X approaches positive or negative infinity. And there is a nice trick that applies here to uh, limits at infinity, which will try to make, you know, if X goes to infinity, flip it, one over x will go to zero because uh, you're, you're not dividing by infinity, but just keep thinking about it. If you're dividing by a bigger number, as you know, as it grows, then uh, that one over is going to be small, 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 going to zero. So that, that's one of a nice idea that can be used here. So we'll switch and uh, do some more examples here. Um, uh, so. Uh, Without looking at this uh, to give you the uh, direct idea there to know, uh, of course, we're gonna graph this function and we find out that it goes toward one. Uh, but if you want to find out what uh, its limit as, um, you know, as X approaches, let's say infinity, then um, we can do uh, limit as x approaches infinity and uh, the trick here is uh, the one I mentioned if we divide the biggest one is x squared so if you divide everything by x squared you know and you divide up and down by the same thing it does not uh, you know and x is going to infinity so x not zero here um, If you divide by x squared, what happens is you get one. So if this x goes to infinity, it gets way bigger, this thing gonna be zero. Same thing here. Just try the numbers, you know, one over x squared. Put five, a thousand, right, a million, and see what happens to this. It's gonna go to zero around that, so, right? So uh, uh, it, what's remaining is one over one, which is one. So, and that's what's gonna happen in the graph. So if we try different values uh, in this table, uh, and we try to graph it, so um, uh, another thing, we don't have uh, a vertical asymptote, right? Because x squared plus one cannot equal to zero because x squared has to equal to negative one for it to equal to zero. So there is no vertical asymptote there. And if you try numbers, you'll find out that's what's happening. Uh, so this L line, um, y equal L is one. All right, so uh, so the intuitive uh, definition um, means that the values of f of x can be made arbitrarily uh, close to L by requiring x to be sufficiently large. So in this case, L is one in this example, as we make x large, uh, the function goes toward one, and you'll see that it happens in a different way. So, um, uh, you know, it happens this way, it happens this way, or uh, it, it converges to it, right? So there are different ways in which uh, you can uh, bring in this limit. So notice that there are many ways uh, in which um, all right, uh, so in this example uh, that we talked about, by letting x decreases through a negative value without bound, we can make f of x as close as to one. Uh, this expression, of course, is uh, what I talked about uh, is the limit there. And same thing uh, will happen because of the x squared, whether even if you pick for negative infinity. So let f be a function defined in some interval. 
then uh, you know to negative infinity means the values of f of x can be uh, arbitrarily close to l by requiring x to be sufficiently uh, large negative and uh, of course a different uh, interpretation you can this way or this way but uh, uh, you see the horizontal asymptote there so we'll do some more examples so y equal l is called the horizontal asymptote of the curve if this you know this limit is happening so uh, that's the definition uh, for horizontal asymptote, right? So find the limit of uh, 1 over x uh, as x, you know, this one, uh, we're familiar with it, so maybe we won't spend too much time on it. Uh, you, you know, if you graph uh, this function, uh, it's something like this. So from x the, this way, and it's going to oh, towards infinity. Um, so it helps when you know these basic functions, then uh, of course you can plug, uh, plug in values and you find out. All right. So therefore, the, you know, according to that, um, you know, uh, because the horizontal asymptote here is zero. Uh, so, so let's, let's write them. So, towards the zero, um, uh, let's show the whole thing. Uh, then it goes to infinity from this way, and towards the, uh, the zero, the left hand side goes toward negative infinity. So, now let's show for uh, x approaches uh, positive infinity here. You see it's going towards the asymptote. And similarly here towards the asymptote. Uh, of course, because the degree here on top and uh, is lower than the bottom. And yes, so this is the graph. And here is a theorem. So that's a graph that we, I did. And um, if you know the function, then you know exactly uh, what it is. So if R is positive uh, and uh, is a rational number, then uh, one over X to, you know, R, power R equals zero. If R is positive, is a rational number such as that is defined then the limit uh, towards as x approaches negative infinity to one over x of r equals zero. So this is a theorem that um, can be applied, and that's the one we ba uh, I, I based, uh, you know, like the first example. So we can take this thing, and um, you know, we can try to look at it different ways. Now we know based on this theorem, if um, we can build on this, like I did for that first example, then we can uh, make it simpler to Then you'll get uh, a three, one over x, two over x squared, a uh, five, uh, four over x, and one over x squared. So as x approaches infinity, you know, since this two is the r there, this is zero, all right? This is gonna become, you know, this is, uh, so let's just show. This is same as four times one over x, right? So the limit of four, uh, you know, times the limit of one over x. So this is zero. So zero times four will be zero. 
and this will be two times similarly zero and this will be zero so what's left is three fifth so this limit here is three fifth and i think it's solved here yeah so let's so this uh, you can pause the video and write the steps this way but uh, it is similar uh, to what i did um yeah so the some of the parts that if you like you can show but i didn't write them here because that's what i'm talking about uh but i did show when we needed to show um that um you know limit of three as x approaches infinity is just three you know so the limit for each term here and so you get the same thing and you can pause the video and write down the steps that way so if you graph it you'll see what's going on um 350.6 and all right um, so find the horizontal and vertical asymptotes of the graph. So vertical asymptote is usually the easier one. Uh, so vertical asymptote it could happen or usually should happen at the denominator equals zero. So x equal five third. Um, the horizontal asymptote, uh, we need that uh, limit to infinity, right? Uh, so let's see, uh, limit as x approaches, let's say the positive infinity c, which if there is one, so this is x, this is the highest one, so we'll divide by this x. And we divide also um my this x and uh, we simplify let's skip the top now as it is we'll work on it later so this is three minus five over x all right so these the trick is uh, you know we need to get this thing inside and to get that inside, you have to have a square root because square root of a over square root of b is equal to square root of a over square root of b. But you can't put x inside a, a square root just like that. It has to have a square root. So we're gonna say, hmm, what does this equal to, right? So that's the question. What do you think? This has to be x squared, right? Just like two square root of two square equal two. Two square is four, square root of four is two. Right, so that's uh, the trick. Uh, so we do a limit of x equal to infinity to x squared plus one over x squared over three minus five over x so now i can um, put this inside using the property for the radicals of law three minus five x so now i can simplify two x squared divided by x squared is two and one over x squared is this, one over x squared. And three minus five x. All right. So, you know, the, the, there is a, this solution put it there. So uh, I think this way you see, they're slightly different these two ways. You can follow this one and check this one, or whichever way you like. Uh, but once we get to this step, um, you know, it's going to be, there is that root law for the limit where, you know, which means we were allowed to do the limit of two and limit of one half as all these uh, approach infinity, right? Or uh, the way I have been showing it is now we're at this stage, we're going to say that's a zero and that's a zero. 
So it's a square root of two over three as X approaches infinity. So the positive side, right? So we need now to test, uh, so there is an asymptote, this is a horizontal asymptote. Uh, so the, the value, the Y equals square root of two over three. Uh, we're gonna do similar work for uh, the negative infinity. However, you know, when we go to that place here, you know, if, uh, if X is negative, you're not gonna use this, and I'll show you why. Let's see if they did it, yes, so. Uh, so now we're testing X going to negative infinity, which means as X is negative. If X is negative, uh, this is sometimes hard to see, but think about it this way. If X is negative, then negative X is positive. Right, which means, for example, negative five is negative. It is negative five, right? But negative x, negative is positive. So that's what this means. So the square root of x squared equal the absolute value of x. Now x is negative, we're not gonna say that. So we can say, for example, a square root of four is negative two, right? Uh, it has to be this, right? So that's what this means. So X uh, approaches negative infinity. So negative values, X is negative, right? Less than zero, which means if you want to use this thing, uh, you have to use negative X. So um, that's the fix uh, for the numerator part. So uh, similarly, instead having um, just the square root of x squared, now we have a negative square root of x squared. So negative outside, and everything is gonna be the same, right? Everything is the same, but this negative is at the end. So y <coughs> is negative two-thirds is gonna be the horizontal asymptote <coughs> at the infinity, negative infinity, okay? So uh, you can pause the video, try these steps again as a practice and they'll be helpful because uh, there is a similar problem in the homework on that. Right. So I did mention at the beginning for me that uh, 3x minus five is gonna be that uh, vertical asymptote there. And if x is close to uh, five third, um, so now let's look at, uh, you know, what, what's happening around this vertical asymptote. So if X is close to five third from the right, which means X is bigger than five third, uh, then um, this value here is positive. And you know, the square root is of this thing is always positive. So you get positive over positive. So the right, hand side um, limit at five third is infinity. You know, we said it's a vertical asymptote, right? So it just here we figured out that it's shooting up. Why it's shooting up? Because from X greater than five third, this value is positive and this value is positive. So it must be positive infinity. Uh, now, if you look at it from the other side, this is going to be negative, right? This is negative, but this remains positive. This, this is not affected. So negative and a positive gives us a negative infinity. And uh, if you try the graph, so anytime you're not sure, go ahead and graph it. You can even graph it online and see, um, you know, so you understand it better. So it looks like you see, uh, that's the first horizontal asymptote we found. That's the second one we found for negative infinity there. And this one for the positive infinity. And that's the vertical asymptote. 
and uh, you see here it's coming towards near to infinity and here it's going towards infinity. All right, so I think this is not bad. So let's look at the example. Uh, everybody knows how um, you know this graph looks. Uh, if not, please uh, review. Um, you know, so as x goes to infinity, that you know the end behavior that thing goes to there infinity so you can try with the numbers and uh, as it goes to negative infinity it goes to towards negative infinity right all right uh, so we did a few examples now let's try a little more from uh, the uh, 2.6 the homework <coughs> uh, so uh, first, we notice that, uh, you know, we have the variable t and t going to infinity. So we can probably try that first on it. See if we get something of a square root of t plus t square and 6t minus t square. The highest is t square, so you divide all by t square. All right, so this one here is a square root of t over t squared. Let's just write it for now. And 6 over t minus 1. Um, if, you, if you care whether this thing is more at the bottom or the left, or, uh, you know, uh, or at the top, so we can also change it to exponents. Um, so this is one half and this is two. Uh, so whichever way you want, so on the side. Uh, we can do this and say, well, this is t times t. And you know t times t is the square root of t. This one has two of them. And this one is this, then you cancel. So it's square root of t and t. That's one way. Or you can say this is one half and this is two. Then you do the quotient rule um, or for the exponents. And we need uh, uh, over one. So times two times two. So negative three halves. All right. So whichever way. The, the important part is it's this and this is like the theorem are there so plus one over six over t minus one um this is as t goes to infinity that goes to zero that goes to zero and that's goes to it which is uh, one over negative one. All right, so negative one. All right, so this is like. Uh, all right, so. Uh, we can graph this or someday look at it, but we'll use the same way. So this is going negative infinity, so we can get the same picture, and it's not a big deal. So x to the 70 is the big one. Let's um, take out that. So um, uh, let's write it and see what happens. So x to the 70, if it factors out, it leaves you 1, right? And x to the 60 doesn't have 7, right? Um, you can take out 6 of them. And when you do that, uh, there is a problem. So uh, if you haven't done this before, 
what's going to leave is 1 over x plus 1. And I'll show you why. Because when you multiply back x7 times 1 over x, it's x7 over x, which is x to the sixth, right? So that's what, what we had in the first place, x to the sixth. So we want to take the highest, uh, you know, when we take the highest and we apply the limit, right? That's gonna be zero, right? Yeah, something clicked here. So, so that's going to be zero. So x to the seventh. Uh, so if you want picture x to the seventh, uh, you know, uh, just like x cubed, right? The end behavior as x is going is approaching near to infinity as uh, x values. So you'll ask you, you know, the, yourself, what happened to x to the seventh? as x approaches negative infinity, right? So that's gonna be a negative value uh, and it's gonna keep uh, for that and behavior it's gonna keep dropping down uh, towards negative infinity. So that's for that one and this one is one. So you will have the limit Near to infinity. All right. So, so here the trick is to factor out uh, the largest, which is different than what you usually do for factoring. This is not the purpose to factor out, but really the purpose of applying that theorem to simplify it. All right, so uh, I, I took two more examples and um, uh, we can work on these examples. Okay, so change of gears, uh, I think let's look, uh, this question should be around um, uh, number eight. And um, it's a little bit different than what we're doing because, uh, you know, uh, so just to show uh, X approaches infinity, but this thing, you know, it's not what, you know, like previous examples. So one thing uh, that we've seen is that squeeze theorem, if we can somehow set it up and we get the two ends, two certain values, we can figure out this. And we know cosine of x is between negative one and one. And we also know uh, also uh, e is a, is a positive uh, value, right? you know, whatever X is, you do this, it's gonna be a positive. So if you multiply this whole thing by it, you'll get negative E, negative five X, um, E, negative five X, because uh, you want this uh, in the middle, um, negative five X. And uh, this, this thing, its graph is known, uh, you know, if you have E5X, it, it's growing. And if you have E, uh, you know, negative 5X. Um, so probably you want to graph it. Let's probably I'll pause here. So because uh, I want you to graph it to see what it is. So you get used to it, then uh, you will say the limit is this. All right, did you think about it? So, um, so these are some of the common things that you need to know. And uh, of course, because uh, of this thing, you know, uh, you're gonna have some, something like, 
this. So as x approaches infinity, uh, this thing approaches zero, right? So let's apply the limits now. So it's much clearer. So um, is zero. And similarly, uh, that one, it's also going to be zero. And using theorem, if this is zero and this is zero, right? Then this must be zero, right? So the limit of as x approaches infinity of this thing here is zero. All right. Uh, this is find the limit if it exists and uh, if an answer does not exist, inter does not exist. So here, uh, this is something different. Uh, this is uh, last question uh, in, for this presentation and uh, I'll check what it is. It's about number 12. So here, uh, I think you've seen before some types of substitution. Uh, different types of this, uh, you know, tangent x and pi over 2, as I mentioned in presentations, uh, as you've seen, uh, what happens. So I want you to think about uh, tangent of x and pi over 2, right? Uh, what happens there? So okay, so If you look at the graph, uh, if you look at the graph of tangent, uh, I think I mentioned this one before, right? Um, then it goes again, something like this. So from this way, right, it's going towards negative infinity. Um, but of course, E does not use pi over two. So here, what we try to do is to say, um, you know, it's a little bit different. So when you face something like this, you're gonna say, well, uh, this tangent of X, let's just put it as T. Um, so if X uh, as approaches, um, pi over two from the right side, what happens to T, which is tangent? What, you know, this thing goes to negative infinity, right? So we can now, let's just do one at a time so you see what happens. So if I put this here at T instead of tangent, uh, I don't need now to put X goes to pi over two because x is not, uh, you know, this kind of function not defined anymore with x, but instead x um, approaches pi over two from the right side, uh, I can use the, the new conversion, which is t approaching negative infinity. So we, we have to do this time to time when, uh, you know, once uh, you figure out that and, E does not use pi over two. Um, but of course we can calculate, but this is a better way uh, of simplifying it. And now you can look at this function, you know, like usually um, uh, something like this, uh, uh, exponential function with E and uh, as, um, T goes to negative infinity, this thing is gonna go to zero. All right, so like six times the limit as it approaches negative infinity and six times zero is gonna be zero. Cool, thank you and we'll stop here.